first thing we're going to do when we remove the shoe is we've got to bend the nails back or cut the clinches off. Take the clinch cutter and hammer, and I'll put the blade of the clinch cutter behind the clinch. Cut the clinches. Once the clinches are cut, I'm going to take my pull-offs to remove the shoe. If you pull to the inside, you're going to put pressure on the sole. So it's to put the pull-offs underneath the heel of the shoe and leave her in the direction of the shoe. So I'll clean up the foot with a wire brush right now. Draw a line across. That's the widest point of our foot. There's our last point of weight bearing. That's the last point that the shoe would be touching the heel. And we can see right now the distance from the heel to the center of the foot, from the center of the foot to the toe, that the front half is longer. This is going to cause a resistance to break over. This foot's overgrown and we need to move that back. It's also important that we remove excess heel. It's not just removing excess toe, we need to remove excess heel. So we're going to remove the excess heel to the widest point of the frog, somewhere around there. So the contact point for the shoe is over the digital cushion, not forward over the wings of the coffin bone in the navicular area. We'll take our knife, remove our excess sole, not to over trim the foot, because we're going to be hot fitting, so we have to leave a, leave a little bit of foot on. When we trim a frog, I like to trim the sides first, get them fairly upright, and trim to the shape of the digital cushion. I look down to check the medial lateral balance again, so I can see how I'm going to use my nippers, so that my nippers trim the foot perpendicular to the long line of the leg. And it's just as important to trim away the excess heel as it is to trim away the excess toe. Trying to use the nippers so that we get our foot trimmed as flat as possible. The technique I like to use when I'm rasping is to pull the rasp. It pulls the foot rasp and it makes the foot flat. If you push the rasp too much, it tends to roll. So it's important that you're pulling and pushing at the same time. If I look at the foot at the widest point, I look for the white line and the wall thickness at the widest point. And that's what I reduce my toe down to. So I'll take away what's excess to that thickness. Sometimes people will dress the toe back to the white line, and then they weaken the integrity of the hoof wall. So I try to leave an equal rim of hoof right around the outside. I'll take my rasp now, remove the thickness from the outside edge, and blend it in at the quarters trying to follow the shape of the coronary bend. Now I have a constant wall thickness from the center of the toe to the quarters, and from the quarters back to the heels, it just decreases in thickness a little. What I do first is I visualize how high up the foot I'm gonna dress. And I like to dress the foot just a little bit higher than I'm gonna nail. And I visualize at what angle I want the hoof wall to be. So I'm just removing the excess hoof back to where we've shaped it. Once we've wrapped it, I'll take a sanding pad and I'll polish any remaining file marks out. So I'm trying to present my work as well as possible to the horse owner. I'm pretty proud of what I do, and I, I try to present it well. You can see the cleaned up foot. 